everybody and new days here we had a long day yesterday but we're ready to go again here today we gotta go grab some more freight from north of winnipeg it's probably going down to the u.s i'm not too sure where yet actually you know what i do know it's in my computer here there's four pieces one's going to orlando florida another one going to pensacola florida another one going to Pascagoula, Mississippi. And the fourth one, drum roll, is going to Shreveport, 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 Louisiana. Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana. So we gotta go pick that up right now, but I wanna share something special with you, I'm very excited charging it up right now but Christmas came early this year and I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Jim uh, a GoPro one second here a GoPro Hero 10 black edition it's still got all the protective uh, plastic on it I'm just charging it up a little bit right now because I have to update it before I can use it there it is Hero 10 black this was, and it came with a nice carrying case too. Excuse my garbage bin over here. I need to empty that out. But thanks Jim so much. That is going to go to good use every day and it'll bring much better content to you guys as well. So we're all gonna benefit off of this. It's an early Christmas gift. Uh, he also got something for my wife, Britt, uh, uh, a gift card. And we just wanna say thank you so much. Uh, what a blessing. I will put it to very good use and make sure that uh, it improves the quality for everybody. So now I got two GoPros. I have this GoPro Hero 9. Nope, this is a GoPro Hero 8 Black Edition. So we skipped the 9 altogether and we got the 10. I didn't even realize that. I thought I had a 9. No, we got an 8 and he got us a 10. We are state of the art here now. <laughs> Top of the line. I'm blown away. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Like I said, just gotta charge it up a little bit and then uh, we'll be uh, off to the races with it. Probably starting tomorrow. So I can use this one and that one together and get multiple angles. <laughs> you got me extra batteries. Two extra batteries, so. I wonder what the nine means on here. I hope that doesn't mean that it's a, like for the Hero 9. Uh, I'm sure it'll work just fine. I think it's just the kind of battery that it is. Probably long lasting or something. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. And like it says here, I have to update it first. But anyway, we got Karen just booting up there. I'm mostly using uh, Karen, the GPS, just so that I can have a good view of where I'm at. It shows me all the streets around me. I can see what streets are coming. It tells me what the speedometer, or I mean what the speed limit is and how fast I'm going. It'll ding at me if I'm going too fast. Uh, stuff like that. See, it shows me where I'm at there on the road. I kind of like knowing like if there's a curve coming in the road. Uh, she doesn't really know how to guide me anywhere around Winnipeg, but she can show me the roads that I'm on and that are around me. So I appreciate that. <coughs> Okay, we have to go and hook up to 604. It's the same trailer we had yesterday. They unloaded that beautiful Dodge truck off of it this morning without me. And that's fine. But uh, I gotta go hook onto it now. It's empty. We gotta go get some more freight for Florida. Watch out, Florida, we're coming. Well, it won't be me, but uh, I will have loaded the trailer. So it'll, it'll have a part of me. It'll have my love with it. I will send my love with the load to Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida. Okay. Now that's how it's supposed to be. Nice and smooth.
had their lights flashing though. It wasn't in, wasn't an emergency. Just tailgating me for no reason. Man, if it would have had its lights on, I would have felt really bad there. But now. All right, we're just pulling up here to our uh, shipper. They'll probably have our freight waiting outside already. Well, this one here is headed to Florida. This one here is also headed to Florida. So these two are going to Orlando. And we got Louisiana and Mississippi back there. It's a really nice, light, easy load to secure. It'll be a nice ride down for the highway driver. Just gonna button it all up, seal it all up, make sure that. Uh, Everything's in order so that when I get back to the yard, the highway driver will have everything set up for him already, or her. But they should still double check my work, just in case they're watching. Okay, and double check my work, double check the securement, and make sure everything's tight and closed properly. Okay, just like that. 39 minutes and I'm rolling away. So a little longer than I thought, but that's okay. Let's check the, the weather here. I just got a message on my satellite saying that we're expecting 10 to 25 centimeters of snow on Wednesday. I gotta make sure. Oh yeah, 99% chance of precipitation on Wednesday. Let's check this out. Snowing, 90. 99% chance of snow and rain in the morning. 96% chance of snow at night. It says snow likely, it's a low of minus two, 15 to 25 kilometer an hour, east northeast winds, chance of snow, 100%. Snow accumulating seven to 12 centimeters. So we're in for our first snowstorm of the season. We got a special weather statement here. I don't care about the ads, come on. Special weather statement uh, issued by Meteorological Services of Canada and Environment Canada. First winter storm of the season for Manitoba, for southern Manitoba. Wednesday will be a messy day with a mix of rain and snow over much of the region, accompanied by a risk of freezing rain over western regions. Air and ground temperatures a bit above zero should limit snowfall accumulation during the day. However, cold air wrapping into the system late in the day will change the precipitation completely over to snow. And accumulating snow is expected to continue through Thursday. 
It's a good thing we don't work on Thursday. It's a holiday. All right, Manitoba. Show me what you got. Come on. If you're gonna give me a snowstorm on my day off, it better be a good one, okay? Because I don't gotta work. I don't gotta be out there on the roads on Thursday. So I wanna see a big snowstorm on Thursday. I'm, I'm counting on it. Let's see what you got, Manitoba. Give me your best shot. Just hold off until Thursday, could you? Or Wednesday night? That'd be great, thanks. Let's get out of here. Look both ways, twice. We're clear there, we're clear there. I'm giving, I'm going for it. I'm gonna send it. Oh, he's turning anyway, okay. and uh, my neighbors in North Dakota, Minnesota. I'm sure you're gonna be affected by this as well. You guys ready for this? This is what we were built for. This is what we were born for. Winter weather. This is our time to shine. Our chance to prove to the world that we're good at something. We're good at surviving. We're good at clearing snow. We're good at shoveling and snow blowing. And we're good at driving in winter weather. All right, guys, this is our time to shine. I'm looking forward to it. Bring it on. It's already mid-November, pretty much. I think it's time for winter. I welcome her. Bring it on, let's get it over with. The sooner we get winter over with, the sooner we get summer again. I'm going for it. There we go. favorite corner. I always roll down my window here like that'll help. And I think I'm gonna go for it. I think I'm gonna go, I'm going for it. The hazard's on, the don't hit me please lights. I think we're good. Too bad. That would be a great intersection to take uh, newbies through. Not right away, obviously, but as you're training them, and once you, uh, once they feel comfortable driving the truck in all normal circumstances, hit them with that intersection. See what they're made of. Because if you can't get through that intersection, well, there are going to be tougher circumstances you find yourself in in trucking. That's just a really, uh, really nasty intersection there. All right, so that trailer is finished. Or finished, I'm finished with it anyway. It's headed down to warmer weather. Now I'm gonna have to find a roll tight step deck in the yard somewhere. I'm gonna need one for tomorrow. I have to go up to Arburg and Toulon again tomorrow. And I'm not seeing any roll tight steps in the yard. I'm gonna see if this one's empty or what it's doing over here, because it's not parked on the cement. You see mine's parked on the cement pad, but the cement pad ends here. So did someone drop a loaded trailer here? Maybe it's here for a reason. I'm just gonna take a peek inside the back here. See if there is something in here or not. 
Oh, yeah, we got lumber. Oh, so this is a heavy load. And somebody dropped it just on the, the soft gravel. Good thing it's well packed. Whoops. Like I said, maybe it's here for a reason. But usually you wouldn't put a loaded trailer there because uh, you have to have the dolly legs on the cement. Okay, well, I didn't need a flat anyways. I need a step. And I'm not seeing one, so I'm gonna have to let dispatch know that uh, I'm not seeing one. Maybe they're expecting one to come in tonight yet. It's gonna need to be here for 6.30 tomorrow morning. I'll go keep looking around the yard. All right, this is 417. These are uh, the old ones that we bought. So they're the old new ones, or the new old ones. See if there's anything in here. It's in the loaded lineup, so I'm assuming there's something in there. Yep, there's something in there. What is that? Okay, well. Can't use this one. This trailer wasn't dropped on the cement properly either. Oh, and this also. What? Guys. That's not supposed to be like that. I'm gonna fix this. Guys. Guys. That's supposed to be around there. Okay. And this isn't even in here properly. The guys aren't putting these away properly. There you go. You see so that that big piece, sort of like a rope inside there, has to be inside. And then you grab that. Tighten that up. There you go. See, now that's secure properly. Is this side not done properly either then? Now this side's done properly. This, however, this cord is what uh, pulls these tight. And when you don't have these hooked in, that'll roll the thing up, right? You don't want to have this thing just loose back here. You need to put a tarp strap on there. I'll have to go and get one from my truck. Ugh, I need to put my gloves on. Now my steering wheel's gonna get all dirty. Oh well. There you go. Grab one of mine. Sharp straps here. Always come prepared. You're always fixing things. Oh, this hook isn't very good. Oh boy. I'm gonna grab a different one. This one's garbage. Or at least the hook is. There we go. Let's grab a better one. There we go. Worry about that other one in a minute. One thing at a time. You see this? Come on. Come on. What can I say? That was easily avoidable. If this was springtime or if this, uh, if we had a heavy rainfall and this ground here softened up, this trailer would go along with that other one that we looked at over there too. And that'd be fun getting that out of that. That's why the cement pad is there. It's right there. You just had to pull forward a bit. But oh well. See, I just go like this and uh, hook it in like in there like that. That holds that up, that holds that there, that holds this down. And there you go, everything's nice and tight. That's the third time I've replaced that tarp strap on there. I guess drivers have been, uh, I shouldn't say the drivers, maybe they've, well, who else would it be? Someone's been just not doing this and then what happens is this rope, when you don't have that tied down, that rope there just flails around in the wind behind the truck and then this gets loose then the ropes come out of the tracks up there and then you got a big mess of cleaning up the pulleys and the it's so much easier just you know see there you go problem solved Let's see how long this one lasts <sighs> i don't know what to say this bothers me a lot though like My OCD is... Eh. Maybe there's a reason though, right? I'm not the one that put it there. Maybe there's a reason it's not on the cement. Maybe it's allergic to cement. I don't know. Let's check the other ones. This one's not on the cement properly either. This side is. That side's on the asphalt. Okay, now I'm just being a Karen. I don't want to be a Karen. Let's get back to work. I already got one Karen in this truck. 
All right, 605 just came out of the shop. Let's see. Is this one empty? Come on, open up. Okay, so we have an empty flat, but we don't have any empty step. So uh, now I'm gonna have to check. Oh, no, I just got a message back saying they don't want a flat tomorrow, they want a step. But I've got to go and grab 417 that we just looked at before with the lumber and unload the lumber right now so that I can use that trailer tomorrow. So at least I've got the opportunity now to uh, satisfy my OCD and get that off of the gravel and when I come back, put it on the cement. Bugs me. Who does that? All right, let's see what's in here. Okay, I gotta bring these guys into heading line. Right into the ball of fire. Wow, that is bright. Whoa. So I had to add a little bit of extra load securement for my own satisfaction. I'm just gonna remind everybody, when you do uh, haul any freight down the road, doesn't matter who you're hauling for, double check your strap and your load securement always. More than just once. You should be doing it every time you stop. Unless you're stopping every half hour, I get it, but just double check it you know, a couple times a day at least. Sometimes freight settles and then your straps get loose. I should say often your freight will settle, almost every time. It'll settle into the dunnage and you wanna make sure that your straps are still tight and your load is still secure. Just Anyway, I added some more securement onto this load just to uh, make myself feel comfortable because before I take freight out on the highway, I wanna make sure it's not gonna kill someone. I don't want any of my freight coming off my trailer or coming through the wall of my trailer or coming through the cab behind me or anything falling off the back. You know, I have this thing about just not wanting people to die around me. So I, uh, I take extra precautions to make sure that my freight is extra secure. Maybe I do a little bit of overkill. Maybe I'm a little too zealous. But uh, my argument and my comeback would be there is no such thing as too much securement. As long as you're not damaging the freight, right? So I just gotta bring these things, these like lawnmower things over to the west side of Winnipeg by Headingley. Drop them off and I'm gonna stay hooked up to this trailer because I'm taking this trailer up to Arburg tomorrow with me. I don't think it's gonna get very cold tonight. I gotta check the temperature. If it's gonna get too cold, I'm gonna have to go plug the truck in. But I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. For now, let's just uh, try to keep that ball of fire out of our eyes. And the sun has decided to say good day and good night till tomorrow. I guess it would just be a good night. The day is over. Good day would be to... It's gone. So we gone. That must mean it's like 4.30, 5 o'clock. So I got uh, stuff off my trailer, those two tractors. I had to fix a bunch of stuff on this trailer because they fit together uniquely. They're different than our other roll tights and I've told you this before, right? Whoever took this trailer out after I loaded it didn't know how to put it back together properly, I guess, and they improvised. They ended up damaging it a little bit, so I was able to fix it. Uh, I'm gonna have to let the shop know that there's some uh, issue with the seal that comes around in here. They'll get it fixed up real quick. They'll probably do it on the night shift. They're usually pretty good. It's right up on here. You can see it's mostly touching. But uh, this cable that holds these two together, uh, it had come undone, and I guess he hadn't figured out, he couldn't figure out how to put it back together, so he had come up with another way of keeping this together with uh, a portable strap, right? It just so happened that the, the pulleys were a bit mixed up in there. I'll show you so that you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to explain it. Okay, hopefully it's not too dark. Oh, it's pretty dark. Okay, well, hopefully you can see this. There's a pulley system here in place and it goes down to here. If I don't fall off the step first, I can show you. 
Ah, it's probably too dark. You're not gonna be able to see that on YouTube. Sorry guys, I'm gonna show you this another day. I think I have shown you this system, but this was all mixed up here. The cable was on the wrong pulley and it had obviously come apart. And so he used a portable strap that ended up bending this up a little bit, but I was able to bend it back, put it in place and I'll get the shop to take a, another look at it just to be sure that it's still good. It's safe. It's not like it's unsafe. It's just, you know how I like everything to be straight and lined up? It's just not sh as straight and lined up as I'd like it to be. But I, I acknowledge that uh, not everybody likes things as neat and in order as me. Okay, not everybody has this sense of, uh, you know, straight lines should be in order and I just got to respect that right everybody's different and that's cool nothing was permanently broke or anything it was a little, I fixed it I fixed it just took me an extra half hour but we got nothing else to do anyways we're going home now it is cooling down really fast it's about quarter to six well a little closer to six o'clock actually completely dark outside and it's dropped like five degrees in the last half hour it surprises us every year well we know it's coming but when it gets here we're still like wow it's fascinating seasons isn't that isn't that inter interesting not just me okay it's just me i gotta stop talking about that you guys think i'm boring we're back to the artificial sun when I get to work and when I leave work. Heh. <laughs> Man. Not even like a little bit of light at the in the western sky. Nothing. Told it surprises me every year. Wow. Wow. Like I said, like my dad grew up in Paraguay. And there's a lot of uh Germans down in South America. Uh, I have some friends that uh, grew up there as well. And they were telling me, we met up with them like last weekend and they were telling me how the sun doesn't really change in Paraguay. It goes right over the center of the sky for the most part. So you're so close to the equator, you don't even really notice it. It rises directly in the east, sets in the west all year round. Huh. My dad still has family down in South America and uh, my friends as well, my, they're new friends of mine. I met them through my wife and uh, some of her friends' husbands. And they're German guys from down in South America as well. Lots of lots of those in our area. It's uh, it's interesting the way they, they, they share their stories from down there. Total different lifestyle. You gotta worry about like panthers or jaguars and snakes and, but no snow. Yeah, there's huge, huge pockets of Germans in uh, Paraguay, in Bolivia, in uh, even some in Argentina. Not as many, but uh, mostly Paraguay, Bolivia, um, Brazil, and even in Mexico. Like, my mom was born in Mexico. Her whole family, they were living in a German area of Mexico. It, it seems that uh, mainstream culture up here in northern North America doesn't really realize that. They think that it's all Latin and all Spanish. There's actually huge pockets of German-speaking people in South America and uh, my family and my friends are proof and evidence of that. They speak just German, they don't speak Spanish, they speak German in their towns and cities there.